Second Corinthians three is about two divisions in the Word of God. It talks about the law of Moses, and it talks about the grace of Jesus Christ. On this side, we have a letter that kills. On this side, we have the spirit that gives life. Okay. On this side, we have the eyes blinded. On this side, people can see. On this side, there's a veil over their face. On this side, their faces are open. Is that more or less, this is more or less the story of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Then it comes to verse 17 and 18 tonight. He says, the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, now listen to this, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Let's leave that table there and start another one. It says, we look in a glass. Now that word glass, I just looked into different translations. We have the word mirror. We have the word water. We have the word word. Those that look into a glass, into a mirror, into water, into the word, will be changed into this image of Jesus Christ. So if I look in the word as a mirror, as water that's reflecting my reflection, if I look at it, I will, if I see the Christ in the word that I reach for those who never heard that word that I preach with a mirror and the picture of Jesus, it depends on what I see in the mirror. Will I be changed from glory to glory? Will I stay in a fading glory? Or will I go into a remaining glory? And that's more or less God's plan with you. Romans 8 verse 29 and 30 says, uh, God predestined and foreordained you to become conformed to the image of his dear son. Okay, uh, uh, Romans chapter 8 says, the whole creation is waiting for you to be that manifested glorious son of God. So that is it. Okay, so James chapter 1. How many of you have a word from the Lord, a prophecy, a dream, a vision, and uh, you are now very excited that it must come to pass? How many of you have a promise in this word and you know it's for you but you haven't seen it yet? You have a prophecy that's burning in your heart. You had a dream years ago. You saw a vision somewhere or there's something burning in your heart and you know it's time for you to get your breakthrough. So tonight I want to say prophecies, promises, dreams, visions. It's time to break through into fulfillment. It's time to see the hand of the Lord bringing you your healing, bringing you your prosperity, bringing you your peace and your joy and your happiness, bringing to you the power of the gospel Bring you the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit into your life. James chapter 1. He says in verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. That is the same word there, glass, mirror, water, word. So if I read the word, hear the word, it's taught to me, it's preached to me, and if I listen to it and I don't become a doer, then I will see in this word only my natural self. And when I see my natural self and I go away from the presence of God's word, I will forget what I saw and I will stay my old wicked self. But if I see Christ in this word, if I see the reflection of the, the Christ Jesus in this word, I will be changed into his image. But if I'm not a doer of the word, in other words, if I don't practice what I heard, if I don't go and live out this word, I will only see my own self here. Oh man, I still miss it here. I still got a problem there. I still got to sort this out. I got to repent here. If I always see the natural self, it's only because I don't do the word. So the word will only judge you if you see your natural man. So uh, there's the spiritual side here. And on the other side, we also have the glass, the mirror. But on this side, if I'm not a doer of the word, I will see my own natural self. And I will not change. 
And what's added to me is judgment. Okay? The natural man is the one who feels condemned. The natural man is the one who feels judged. If he hears a word, he feels condemned by it. He feels the word is judging him. He reads it and he feels condemned. That is because you see your own wicked self in here. You know why you see your own self? Because you don't do the word. If you do the word, you automatically become a spiritual man. You automatically start changing. If you don't do the word, you will stay a natural man. Because what you see in the word is what you will be. So the word is like water reflecting your image. The word is like a mirror reflecting. It's like a glass reflecting. The word is there like water to change you into the image of Christ or to keep you in a wicked natural self that always will be judged and condemned. Proverbs 27 verse 19. As in water, face answers to face, so the heart of man to man. Amplified. As in water, face answers to and reflects face. So the heart of man to man. Okay, what is the word of God saying to us here? If I look in water, you know, imagine an animal coming in there and there's no waves, there's no rippling of the wind and the water is calm and very like a mirror. Imagine that animal looking there and he sees himself. <laughs> he says, so the heart of man will answer to man. What is he saying here? We have been discussing the last couple of weeks the, the, the thing of double-mindedness and single-mindedness. If I can get my mind to agree with my heart, what I hear in the Word of God, and then confess it with my mouth, I will see results. The problem with most people is they confess what they believe with their heart, but their minds doubt. So I've got to get my mind to believe what my heart already believes. And if I then speak with my mouth, God says, if I believe, I receive, then whatsoever I say, I will have. The problem is doubt. And we got to get doubt out by getting more faith. So we got to get the word in us to feed our faith so that we can get rid of our doubts. So how do we do it? I got to look into the mirror, the glass, the water. And tonight I want to put the emphasis, I got to look into that water that reflects an image. And if I can see that double image there, there will be the agreement of my heart of my spirit to my heart of my soul. In other words, there will be one heart, one mind, one soul. Serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Serve Him with a single heart. Serve Him with a single mind. You know, in other words, my mind and my heart must be in agreement. I must see the same reflection, what I hear in my heart. My mind must get the same image and when there's the same reflection in the water man there's going to be explosion of the glorious supernatural power of a spiritual man and I will get rid of this natural man that can't change that will always be judged and I will start moving into the reflection of the Christ and be a spiritual man Remember there in Mark chapter 2, there were four friends and they had a sick friend and they, they brought him to Jesus and there was no place in the house. So they broke the roof open and they dropped the man in front of Jesus. And the Bible says, and Jesus said, your sins are forgiven you. And then the people started reasoning in their hearts. Who is he that can forgive sin? Only God can forgive sin. And Jesus said, why do you reason in your hearts? And we have it in Matthew there, Luke and Mark, and the one says, why do you reason in your minds? Why do you say, so Jesus says, what is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to say rise up, take up your bed and walk? But to prove to you that the Son of Man has power to forgive sins on earth, I say unto you, rise up, take up your bed and walk. So Jesus always spoke to the natural people as people that's full of reasoning. He speaks of the spiritual people of those that believe. John chapter 1 says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. The natural people. So the Bible says in Romans chapter 11, The natural branches is Israel. We are not natural. We are not from the Jewish department. We are from the spiritual department, which is the believing group. This side crucified him. 
This side believed him. Okay. But on this side, where we have the believing side, verse 11 says, He came unto his own of John chapter 1, the natural crowd. They received him not. But as many as believed him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God or children of God. Okay. So there's the believing part. There's the reasoning part. The reasoning people are the natural people. The believing people are the spiritual people. So you've got to decide tonight, which side are you on? How many has a prophecy, a promise, a dream, a vision, an idea, a hunger, a desire for God to do something and you haven't seen it yet? Tonight is your time to see it break through. In the year 2000, the month of January, the last week, God gave me a vision. Now, who knows a vision is spiritual? I had a vision of a pool of water. I saw myself lifted up in the spirit and I saw this pool which I built. And I saw how I went down into this pool and stirred the water. And after I stirred the water, God said, Son, if you build a pool, this is what I will do. If people walk through the water after you stirred it, I will make promises and prophecies come to pass. I will cause people to receive all sorts of miracles, all sorts of signs and wonders, and I will make dreams come to pass. I will heal them from all sorts of incurable diseases. Man, there were no buts. We build a pool. And we had it up till 2004. And since then, a couple of times we had the pool and we saw wheelchairs emptied, crutches thrown away, HIV viruses died, cancers dry up, people walking through there blind, coming out, seeing on the other side. All sorts of miracles happen because of the vision of the water at a pool. So I want to take your attention for a moment. If I have water, there will be a reflection of something. Either the reflection of a spiritual Christ person or the reflection of a natural man that will always be judged and condemned. Let's start at verse 1. He says, Brethren, I would not have you that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And that all eat the same spiritual meat. They all ate spiritual meat. Now you show me where they ate spiritual meat. They ate manna. They all ate the same spiritual meat. I mean, those quails that flew in and fell next to the company of Jews there in the desert were real birds. They did not eat spooky birds. They did not eat spooky bread, you know, when they put it on their mouth. I thought I had bread, you know. You know? Let's just read. We're going to get there. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of a spiritual rock. That followed and that rock was Christ. Did they see Christ or did they see a real rock? Did Moses hit a real rock and real water came out of a real rock? Yet God said they all drank. Spiritual drink. Yeah. But it was natural meat and it was natural water. So you decide what reflection is in the water that you behold. In 1 Corinthians 2, the Bible says in verse 9, we know it. As it is written, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it come up in the heart of man, that which God has prepared for those that love him, but God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For no man knows what's in a man except the Spirit of man that's in him. So no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Hmm? 
But we have not received the spirit of this world. We have not received the spirit of this world. But there is spirit which is of God. So there's two spirits that you can receive. He says, there's stuff that God want to show you that nobody's ever seen, heard, or dreamt of. But to know it, there must be a spirit that you receive. He says, we have not received the spirit of this world, but we have received the spirit which is of God. Okay? So, the natural has a spiritual side to it. And that spirit is the law. The law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. The anointing destroys the yoke so that you can come to Jesus and receive his yoke, which is not heavy or difficult to bear. So there's a spirit of God and there's a spirit of this world. Now, Jesus said, I am not of this world. And he said, but the Jew people, the people of Jerusalem had a tabernacle which was of this world. And he talks about the law. Romans 7 says, the law is spiritual. So there are people that think they are very spiritual because they try to keep the law of Moses. They try to go back to the law thing. They try to go back to Judaism and they miss it. So we have not received the spirit of this world. Which is the natural, the natural branches was Israel. So the natural year is not the sinners in the world. The natural are the people that stick with the law that judge and condemn. Man, this is good stuff, man. This is good stuff. The law judge and condemn. Jesus says in the same scripture, I have not come to judge the world. And the same scripture says, I have come to judge this world. He talks about the world and this world. I have not come to judge the world, but I have come to judge this world. Which world? The natural world that did not receive him. So 1 Corinthians 2 where it says, we have not received the spirit of this world, which is the law thing, but received the spirit of God. So he's talking about this world. The natural man talking about the law people. Because... The natural man, receive not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are spiritually discerned. Not reasoned. He says, but the spiritual man (laughs) is judged by no one. But this man is judged all the time because when he reads the word, he sees the natural man. He forgets what he looked like. So the mirror only reflects his faults, his problems, his situations, because the law will always tell you you wrong. It'll always tell you where you missed God, where you failed God, where you disappointed God, where you hurt God. But the spirit side will always tell you grace and mercy, truth and power. You are free where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Freedom on this side, you have not received the spirit of bondage. You are either in bondage or in liberty. You are either natural or spiritual. You are either reasoning or discerning. You are either judge, you are either free. Which side do you want to be on? The law of Moses, the letter kills. The spirit of grace, the spirit of life makes your eyes open to see. You either see the image of Christ or you either see the natural man. The spiritual man believes. The natural man reasons, and the water is the thing that reflects it. They ate spiritual meat, they drank spiritual drink, yet they all died because they did not discern the spiritual side of the thing. They only went for the natural thing. So you decide what you want to see when God moves. Do you want to see the natural results, or do you want to see the anointing of the Spirit that is bringing about what you are experiencing? What is happening in your life? Is your eyes on the natural? Are you reasoning things out, or are your eyes on the spiritual and you are believing the almighty God. Hmm? 
So let's go to the book of Joshua. How many of you have a promise, a prophecy, a dream, a desire, a hunger, something that says, man, I, I must be healed. I must prosper. I must get my breakthrough. I must get that business. I must get that house. I must get, come on, every single person, there must be somebody. I mean, you're not dead, are you? Have you got any hunger, desire, dream, vision in your heart that says, oh God, I've got to get it? Now remember when God spoke to Moses and he said, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Okay, where must they go to? To the promised land. What was the promised land? Not the land as they were in at the moment that they had to water it by their hand. They had to plant the stuff. He said, but the land that I take you with, you did not plant the vineyards, but you'll drink, eat the fruit. You did not build the houses, but you'll stay in it. Like a new South Africa thing. You did not do this, but you'll get it. Okay. So God says, this land that you're going into that I promised unto your fathers is not like the land you're coming out of. This land flows with milk and honey. You don't have to water it. It's watered by the rain of heaven. You don't have to build houses. It's already built. You don't have to plant vineyards. It's already planted. You just go and possess the promises. Right? But they did not. For 40 years they wandered in the desert because they did not discern they were eating spiritual food. They did not discern they were drinking spiritual drink. They only saw the water and after they drank the water they murmured because there were no more water. They did not realize it was a miracle from the almighty God. They ate the manna and they ate the quails. They did not realize it was a miracle from heaven. They thought it natural. That's why they died a natural death. But if the people that discern, man, this is spiritual stuff that we are getting. Everything in my life is a miracle. Everything in my life is from the hand of God. I praise Him for my life. I'm spiritual. I'm sold out to the Spirit of God. I'm not natural. I'm not a legalistic person. I'm not under the law of Moses. I'm free. I'm liberated. I walk by grace. You got that? Let's read and see if you got it. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. So you don't have to have any father or mother that's meaning anything to you. <laughs> Verse 2, God said to Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. Now, Jordan is a river. A river is full of water. And if you go to Joshua 3, 4, and 5, you'll see that the Jordan was in flood when God said to them, go over. So there was a lot of water. Remember water as the word of your emphasis here tonight. Hmm? Thou and all the people unto the land. What land? Promised land. Which I, which I do give them, not work for. Okay, verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. Not I will give it to you, I have given it, but you must go cross this water and possess the land. Verse 5, there shall not any man stand before you. Romans 8 verse 31, if God is for you, who can be against you? As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. Did Jesus say anything in Matthew 28 verse 20 to the effect that, and I will be with you always. <laughs> Jesus will not forsake you. He will not leave you. You got promises. Go get it. You got prophecies. Go take it. 
You've got dreams and visions. Get it into your life. God wants to bless you, multiply you, prosper you. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prosper. God wants you blessed. God wants you well. Let's go on. Only be strong and courageous, very courageous, that thou may, you know, over and over, verse 6, verse 7, strong and courageous, that thou may prosper wherever you go. Put your finger there and say, oh, Lord, that is for me. <laughs> Listen to this. But this book, what is this book? The glass, the mirror, the water that brings the reflection of heart to heart, of man to man, of bringing that agreement so that you can get the word fulfilled in your life. This water reflecting word thing that you have in front of you, let it not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. When it comes to meditating the word, what does the Bible say in Psalm 1? What will happen if you meditate this word day and night? You shall be just like a tree planted by the waters, and I shall not be moved. And what shall happen? You shall bear fruit 12 months a year. In the times of drought, your leaves will not wither, and you shall be prosperous in all your ways. Jeremiah 17 would say the same thing. He that trusts in the arm of man will be like a bare pole in a desert land. But he that trusts in the Lord and meditates on the things of God will be like a tree planted by the waters, man. God is about to bring you blessings. You've got to take this word. See the reflection. Woohoo! And meditate what you see. Let your heart agree with the heart of God. Let your mind be single-minded on the things of Almighty God. Let it not depart out of your mouth. Deuteronomy 30, this word that I give you today is not difficult. It's not in heaven. It's in your heart and in your mouth. Romans chapter 10 verse 6, the righteousness which is the faith speaks. It says the following, the word is so near you. You don't have to go to heaven, you don't have to go to hell to get it. It's in your heart and in your mouth to speak it. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13, it says... Uh, because we have believed, we have the same spirit of faith, therefore we speak. Yeah. Mark 11, if I say whatsoever I say and believe in my heart that I receive it, I will have whatsoever I say. Yeah. So, Joshua, take this word. Let it reflect something to you. And if you see the reflection, meditate it. And if you can meditate it and see that unity, speak it. And if you speak it after meditating it, listen to this. Thou shalt make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Remember they in Numbers 12, 13, 14 when Moses sent the spies out to look at the promised land. Amongst them were Joshua and Caleb. Twelve came back. Joshua and Caleb said, let's take the land. God says, take it. Ten, ten were reasoning. So, oh, you know, land's good, yes, but also giants. Land's good, but the people are warriors. Josh and Caleb said, the land's good, let's take it. Yes. No, they didn't. They said, if God said we can take it, let's take it. They did not look at the natural. They did not look at the giants. They did not look at the good fruit. They did not look at anything. They just looked at the word, saw the reflection. This is what God says. Let's take the land. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Uh, I wonder if this guy is going to be healed. Man, he looks very sick to me. God says, you natural freak, go back to the law. You judged already. Forget it. No, don't forget it. Hmm? So cross this Jordan, verse 11. Cross over this water. Verse 13, remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land. What is the rest? The rest is, I did not labor for this stuff. God said, it's not like the land you come out of. This one you're going into, the houses already built. 
the vineyards are already planted. The water comes from heaven. You just go and possess it. God's things is by grace. All his promises. I can't earn it. It's grace. I got to believe it to receive it. I hope you receive it now. So if I look in the word, I'm going to say, wow, look what's in it for me. He says, it's yours. I meditate it. I speak it because I see the reflection that if it's there, it's in here. If it's in here, I agree, it's mine. Because he said so, it is mine. It's grace. If you read Hebrews chapter 4, it says the following. They did not enter the rest because the word that came to them was not mixed with faith. Therefore, they never entered the rest. And if Joshua gave them rest, the King James says Jesus, the Amplified would say Joshua. If Joshua gave them rest, God would not promise another time where we will enter the rest because they did not enter the rest. But you have the promise to now enter that rest. Do not fall into the same unbelief as they did. Because they just saw the natural meat, the natural water. They never saw the spiritual God that is working with them on spiritual ways. That is, God is spirit. You are spirit. God wants to do spiritual miracles in your life. I hope you can see it. The natural man do not receive the things of the spirit. Because they are spiritually discerned. But Paul says, we are not natural, sold out under the law, but we are spiritual. Because we believe the grace of Almighty God. Okay? So, when you read the word, do you literally see a reflection in water? No, you read a letter. But Jesus says, this word is spirit. The spirit is water. And it's life. Water is life. You see the adverts all over. Save water. Water is life. So the word is spirit and life. The spirit is also water. And water is also life. Okay. So do you literally see a reflection? No. I believe what I read. And I say yes. I get an agreement with heart to heart. Face to face. I say what is believed, what I receive, and zam, bam, wicked damn, bam, there's the result. Thunder, glory, light breaking through, my healing, my prosperity, my breakthrough, my prophecies, my promises. In 1980, I walked into a television station in South Bend, Indiana, United States of America, with Dr. Lester Sumrall. Eight o'clock in the morning, I was on the show there with Good Morning with Dr. Sumrall. And I sat there in the chair with him talking. And as I spoke, God said, you're going to have a television channel. It's October 1980. I came home and I said to Annalise, we're going to have a television station. In 1996, I stood up and I said, do you see there? There was no door. I said, you see that wall? That's going to be a door that will enter into our TV station. February 1996. August 96, we had to break open. And SABC was here with a truck. And they broadcast the two of our meetings. Okay. February of 2000, I said, we're going to start broadcasting constantly on TV. By that December, we started broadcasting with the University of Pretoria. Again, February of 2004. I said, before this year is over the halfway mark, we will have our own TV station at the pastor's conference. In June, we started our own TV station. Because of a vision and a dream, I never looked at the natural, just went for it. It's spiritual. Okay, I can tell you lots of stories. Everybody says, I'm not natural. (laughs) 
Can I help you? You heard people say, but naturally, man. I said, well, we're not in the same company. <laughs> but the, this is the way it'll happen. It's natural. But we're not natural. Do people naturally walk on water? Do donkeys naturally speak to their bosses? Do axe heads naturally swim on water? Do men are nat- do, do men are. It sounds like Twana. Do men are naturally fall from heaven? <laughs> you know where we are. But we say, men, look at this. You say, but naturally it must happen. You say, but I don't believe in the natural. Because the natural works with laws. I believe in supernatural. So, brother, you can do what you want. The law of gravity is there. You wake up in the morning, you don't wake up on the roof. You sleep on your bed because of gravity. <laughs> but what if Paul steps in? Oh, what, what if God steps in and he takes Paul in the spirit? What if God steps in and he takes Ezekiel in the spirit? What if God steps in and he takes Philip from one place and he puts him down in another place? What if God steps in and he lifts me out of my bed and lets me preach in Thailand and bring me back, back the next day? Ah. See, but if you're natural, this stuff will not manifest. It was a spiritual connection when God said, build a pool. And if you stir the water and let people walk through, their promises, their prophecies, their dreams, their visions, their desires, their healings, their miracles, their prosperity is about to break through. It's water. It's not. It's spiritual. They all walk through a spiritual pool. No, but you know, it's a pool that they're building in their church. Well, do you want to be falling in the desert like the Israelites? Or do you say, ah, the rock is Christ. No man, the rock is still standing there in Arabia, man. Hmm? Okay. Let's read this. You're going to follow it. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Not a leopard, a leper. In other words, he had a sickness with sores. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus says the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, ten chains of raiment. I mean, this guy was loaded to go pay for the healing of Naaman. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have there were sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Now remember, Jesus said, go heal the sick. Go cleanse the lepers. Go raise the dead. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, I, am I God to kill him to make a life that this man does send him to me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. See the reasoning? And it was so, verse 8. When Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So I want to say, come, you will find out that there's a man of God that hears the voice of God. We build a pool. If we stir the water and you walk through it, God wants to bless you with supernatural breakthrough miracles. Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times 
thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and he went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me. Listen, listen to the reasoning. I thought he would come out, stand, and call on the name of the Lord. Habra Kadabra. <laughs> he must have been used to magicians, this guy. And he would strike his hand over the place. Zhur, zhur. <laughs> this is what the guy reasoned. Elisha was a prophet, not the magician. He says, are not Abana and Parfar. You see, it just sounds like Abracadabra. <laughs> <laughs> sounds just like that magic stuff. <laughs> are not the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away in a rage. His servants came near and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do something great, would thou not have done it? How much rather when he said, walk through the pool. I mean, wash and be clean. <laughs> then he went and walked through the pool. I mean, he went and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan. According to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Imagine, 